full in-house edition of Take Don't Lie. We're talking Travis Etienne. We got Chris Martin here, college football analyst. So let's get into it. What makes Travis Etienne so good? Let's roll the tape. And the big thing we see out of him, one, patience, two, vision. But I love this play. First play of the game in the ACC championship game. Take us through what you're seeing when you look at this play. Well, first off, it's a running back that runs with his eyes. And by that, I mean he has good vision. But he also has patience there, Michael, because he got to the hole. He looked, he saw it was a little bit clogged, and he was able to bounce outside uh, and hit the perimeter. And then from there, he's turning on the gas. Let's see it again. You know, he goes up. Watch the balance, too. Yeah. And what I love is watch him get his foot in the ground. There it is. And then he bounces it out, which is a wonderful jump cut. And then he has the vision to find the crease. Surprised they weren't able to get him on the ground there. Yeah, this is one of those things. When I look at this run, I look at it first from the running back standpoint. This is a guy, again, you said he runs with his eyes. I love that he's not running up the backs and he doesn't take mm -hmm. the first hole that opens. The first hole opens and closes almost instantly, so he doesn't take that one. And again, mm -hmm. he's able to move side to side, press that edge, and then go out and make a play. Um, th with, e with ATN, though, what I see, I see that speed, too. And this has got to be what part of what makes him an ultimate weapon. And we get to see it from behind. Two DBs, we're going to talk about this. Talk about what we see out of these defensive backs. Let's start with my man, 23. <laughs> Well, I, I kind of laugh because you can tell he's turning it down. He doesn't want any parts of ETN in the hole. You want to flash color in the hole just to yeah. get him out, and but then you got to have the outside to contain. Bingo. But once he bounced outside, you know, there was no one there. The other thing I see here is this guy's got a little bit of strength and power, probably a little more than I anticipated. Mm -hmm. So you can't just, you know, you got to bring your feet. My coach used to say, if you don't bring your feet against a guy like this, you'll be looking at his rear. Yep. And that's exactly what's happening here. So the big thing for me is I'm looking at these two high safeties. And yep. I'm looking at guys as secondary run, uh, secondary alley fill guys. Mm -hmm. And I see 20 at the 20 inch top left. We've got three right here on the near side. And both of these guys, 20 is thinking about scraping backside A. We've got three coming down with no conviction. And yep. I think that's the big key. That's how Amari Rogers, number three, is able to get the seal. Hunter Renfro takes both safeties out yeah. of this play. And Travis Etienne, because his eyes are up, because of that vision, he's able to go out and make that ultimate play. You talked about colors flashing in the hole. We're behind ATN right now. And watch as this play starts. You'll see 23 inside of Amari yep. Rogers pop inside. So he takes it outside. And there's nobody there to help. 23 should have stayed outside. Three should have came down hard, but instead, because they're able to set this play up, it's able to go the distance. Not only that, 23 is looking at Hunter Renfro. He's got to turn his head and run right through yes. him. I mean, he's got, he cannot let him occupy two defenders because that'll get you crushed. Uh, you see right there, he gets sealed. Actually, it's number three. Yeah, cannot get, Rogers, can, yep. Can't get walled off there. That's a receiver. You're bigger, you're more physical. Yes. Turn your head, look right at him, run right through him, and then that won't happen. Can we just can we just admit right now, there's no way their wide receiver should block. <laughs> at all. Ever. Th ever. Never. Ever. And I love when we get to this next tape. I want to go to the next tape here. Um, after we watch this play one more time, I want to get to the next tape. That shouldn't happen The right big there. key here, this is what I love. This is, so here we get to see a little bit of this power. We talked about the vision. We talked about the speed with ATN, mm -hmm. but we're also going to talk about his ability to run through arms mm -hmm. and how critical that is for a running back. He's rarely tackled by the first defender, and that's because he's a strong lower unit runner. So if you come up and you just try and arm bar him, he's going to run right through it. And we talked about the balance, but also watch once he gets his shoulders square, then there, there you see the power in the burst. Oh, yeah. And this is what the, the scouts at the next level love about this kid. He can get his foot in the ground, change direction. I love how he finished the run. He switched yes. the ball to the outside arm, which shows some awareness. Oh, yeah. You know, he literally thinks on his feet. He feels the pursuit coming from inside out. He shifts the ball to the outside arm. Shows you that he's a smart player also. Yeah, he's running through as a linebacker or a defensive end that he's running through those arms at the line of scrimmage mm -hmm. before he's got his head of steam. This is him. This is him in neutral state, yeah. being able to run through arms. And obviously, we see 23 not give us the greatest effort again in terms of making that tackle. <laughs> but I'm seeing the backside defender come down line, make a tackle, try to make that tackle, but he can't hold on because once he gets those legs going, you're not going to be able to hold on to him. And again, right there, that changing of the hands. Hamlin certainly is coming over to try and punch that thing out and get the ball back to Pitt, but he's not going to make it happen. I mean, this <laughs> is... I laugh because I, I hate to put 23 on blast just because he sure. is a deep in the back. But I got to call you out, dog. When you see that, it, it shows you that, A, he does not want to tackle. He wants no part of this guy. He has him squared up right in the hole where you want him. That, yes. he's, he's what we call dead to rights. Yes. And then there's no way that this guy should be able to elude this tackle. He just didn't want it bad enough. Yeah, that's the, that's the, thing, that's the thing I noticed. I mean, this is a perfect fit. Right there. That's a perfect fit right off the butt. Get him on the ground. You just got to get him on the ground. And ATN, to his credit, 
he's able to maximize that play. You see him here again. Five on tackles. Hand. This is just fantastic. Runs through it. Was it five five defenders to get a hand on yeah. it? Nobody yeah. Nobody gets him down on the ground. Um, he is. He's got some special energy when it comes to running the football. And this again, neutral state. His feet are stopped. Yep. And he's still able to run out of those. I think we got to give a shout out to Clemson Strength and Conditioning <laughs> staff because they got him in the weight room doing a little bit of squats. As we wrap up this tape, we get to another one. And then again, we talk about it running through arm tackles. I want to talk about sort of that leg drive. We talked about strength. We hit on strength and conditioning. Talk to me about this leg drive and what this means when you're in the shadow of your own goalpost. Well, he's the type of back that you have to tackle him with population, meaning you got to get a lot of guys to him. You see all those blue colored jerseys. Yes. You got to have numbers to get him on the ground. And I think where he's going to surprise some folks is that that power that he possesses, the yeah. ability to move a pile, get the dirty yards inside. That's what he's showing you here that he can do like four, five, six defenders just to get this guy on the ground. Yeah, I think that that I first of all might bar, have to borrow that that po tackle the population because <laughs> that is a that's 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 it though. He is someone much like Eno Benjamin at Arizona State mm -hmm. that people assume because they've got wheels that they're not a strong runner. But then when you see a play like this, everybody and their mama knows you're going to run mm -hmm. the football. Backed up. We know you're backed up. You know you got to run the football here to buy yourself some time, to buy yourself some breathing room, to avoid a negative play in terms of a safety or possibly a fumbled snap that goes and turns into a touchdown. They know you're running the ball, and yet they still can't stone you in the hole. And I think this speaks to, again, that leg drive and that power that we've got to give him more credit for in his game because everyone just sees that highlight long run of the first play we showed. They yep. don't think about these little runs, but these are the runs that amass those big numbers because he's able to help his team out. And I think it shows how he's wired from the neck up because a lot of backs would just go down here. They'll say, all right, we got, we got the yards. We got it yes. out of, across the goal line. We got to get it out. And uh, watch how he keeps going. Like a lot of guys will go, let's just go down here. Go down here. You yeah. know, we got well, a little bit of pushing. space to play with. He wants to fight for the tough chunks. You know, this is why he's a thousand thousand yard rusher. Oh yeah, and again, this is one of those things. The sad part, this this might bring, this run will bring his average down, <laughs> but it's a run that his team desperately needs because yep. they've got to get now. The re the real reality of this situation is now we're looking at now we're looking at second and four, mm -hmm. and second and four is way better mm -hmm. than second and two, which is what it would have been if he goes or excuse me, second and eight if it's what happens when he goes down immediately or second and 10 if he just plunges into this guy's back like we see so many backs do just head down barrel through and get the job done well and also that he doesn't have to bounce everything outside yes. i think that's the big key here too this Bingo. is a guy that will run between the tackles he'll square his shoulders up you know we've seen him run parallel to the line of scrimmage but he can come downhill i think that's what he's showing you here yeah i, I love that out of him and as we wrap this play up we are going to get to like it's not all good and <laughs> That's the reality, never, right? Oh. I love when he has the football in his hands. I love his mentality mm -hmm. because he is someone that wants to get every single yard that he can get and he's going to make positive. Now, the big key for Travis ATN, they lose Adam Choice. They lose Tavian Feaster. Those are two guys that were excellent in pass protection. This is from his freshman year. And this is something I noticed as a freshman with Travis ATN one. Not sure where to go. That's a freshman mistake. We can fix that. But watch him here on this pass protection. Oh. oh, wow. That's that's a no-hitter. Yeah. You know, but I think it starts, too, right there with, number one, knowing where you're lined up. Yep. I mean, you can't go right behind. I believe that's Ray Ray McLeod Jr. there. You can't line up. You got to know where you're lined up. And then be deliberate. Yes. Understand what you're doing. You can see here the hesitation when he comes out. So he's not real sure. Doesn't know where to line up. Not sure to get. You got a guy blitzing in the A-gap. You, you got to step up. And you got to front him. You yes. got to stone him. Yeah. And it seems like right there, he just, he, he's not a willing blocker and so yeah if there's a hole or, or a wart on his game right now it's, it's sort of looking at that yeah and I think this is the big thing and I pointed out that this is his freshman year yeah because this is one of those things where people are going to say well he was just a freshman he wasn't sure he was just a freshman he wasn't sure but we get to show it again one more time and the big thing that I noticed one again we mentioned getting lined up but watching the way that he approaches the situation you sp you said it you got to front this guy. Mm -hmm. This isn't a guy on the edge that you're going to take out with a cut. This is a guy that you have to get in front of him. You got to get your feet set. Mm -hmm. You got to get that flat back and you got to collision him, button press and control the situation so that you save your quarterback and he's giving him a chicken wing. He didn't even break stride here. I mean, he literally didn't break <laughs> stride. He wasn't even a speed bump. Like he didn't slow him down oh. at all. And so, like, you got to step up. Even if, at the very least, get your body in the way. Make him run you through you, not give him a clear path, because once he gets a clear path, this is what the end result is. Yeah, the ultimately, it ends up being a sack, obviously. And this is one, again, you see it closer, up close here. 
just the chicken wing. He's not in no position to make a, make that play. So as we get to the next one, and this is something that you think, well, he's a freshman. Yeah. So we want to see him as a sophomore. This is this most this most recent season. This is when we saw Adam Choice and Tavian Fisher take these reps in the passing game the bulk of the time, except they tried to get him some pass pro work against NC State. What happens? Quarterback sack again. Yeah, and, and if I'm watching this, I'm the opposing team, opposing defensive coordinator. I'll say, I stop the film and say, look, this guy doesn't want to block. So when it comes to the pass, bro, just, just run at him because he does not want to block. That's the part of the game that he's going to have to clean up. Certainly have, if he has any aspirations of going to the next level, you got to be able to stand in there, hold your water, and take this guy on. We'll, we'll see it here. Watch him sort of dive out. Looks like he wants to cut, but he doesn't right. start high and then drop down. He just dives for the right. lower body, and, and that's not even what you're taught to do, technically speaking. So he's got to get there, decide first again, have conviction. Am yes. I going to go take this guy on, or am I going to try and cut him? And if I'm going to try and cut him, go start a little higher on it. You know, and then drop down, and then I think you have more success. Yeah, you got to run through those outside, that outside pad. You got to make sure you're you're sawing him off, essentially. Mm -hmm. So I think the big thing for me with Tavian, with excuse me, with with Travis Etienne is recognizing that he's so talented as a running back, and we saw that out of all those plays where he's running the football. He's willing to do everything. The next part of his game that I'm looking forward to watching is him evolving in pass pro. But I will say this: this is something that, as a if I'm a Clemson fan, this is a thing that's on the top of my mind. Is what are these play? Do can we? How do we? How do we make? How do we change this? Is it he gets better, or do we have somebody else on our roster that can get the job done? Because consistently over the last couple of seasons, they were able to put other people in place to cover up this flaw. But now going into year two with Trevor Lawrence, year three with Travis Etienne, no Feaster, no choice. You have Lynn J. Dixon there. Is Lynn J. going to be the guy that's in there for pass pro? Because you mentioned as an opponent, if you're an opponent and you recognize they don't really throw the ball when he's in the game, mm -hmm. that changes your game plan. And he's a liability. But here's what, go back to Trevor Lawrence. He, here's the reality of it, and this is why coaches are worried. Trevor Lawrence could have been the first quarterback gone in this NFL draft. So yeah. he is the golden boy. Oh, yeah. And you can't have a guy in there who's going to be suspect at blocking that could potentially get him hurt. If he is a liability, they just can't run the risk of getting Trevor Lawrence hurt. Especially like on that last play we saw where it was the front side. I mean, you got to have protection for him. ETN's got to be an improved blocker this year. Yeah, looking forward to him taking those steps as he looks to elevate his draft stock as well. Thank you so much for coming in, Chris. This was fantastic. Loved it. Folks, thanks so much for tuning in to Tape Don't Lie.